So Buttigieg is apparently on the ground today in East Palestine. But it's been three weeks since the uh, rail derailment and the disaster there. Biden still not there, still hasn't showed up. Um, yet another missed political opportunity for the Democrats. And it's just would have been the right thing to do. But you know who is there? <laughs> oh, boy. Donald Trump. Um, let's start with uh, the McDonald's clip here, because <laughs> he went. He, he said he on Truth Social, he truthed it up, said he was going to show up in East Palestine, and he did. Uh, he went to a McDonald's, and this was the first time, like, he, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was always, just Always on brand, always on brand. Always on brand. Right. I mean, that is his, that, right, that's his favorite, favorite uh, establishment. It's, like, he, what, was it uh, Burger King or McDonald's that he got, like, millions of burgers at that White House event? My, I think it was Oh, McDonald's. that was McDonald's, of course, yeah. McDonald's. Yeah, I think he's a... He's a man who's loyal to the brands he loves. As if you'll yeah. remember that Diet Coke tweet from many years ago where uh, he said something like, Diet, <laughs> Diet Coke doesn't like that I said this, but don't worry, I'll keep drinking that garbage. I'll keep <laughs> drinking that garbage. I mean, uh, gotta respect it. If, uh, he, he knows but, what he likes. And, He's a man of taste. And this is good politics too. Like this mm -hmm. sort of thing, Americans and like consumption is the main sort of avenue of culture uh, and fast food. Food is just making us think about Chick Fil A or, or these sorts of things. Like that's people pay attention to that stuff more than they pay attention to the news. Let alone what he does here, which is uh, buys firefighters and police officers, you know, whatever they want off the menu. This is like vintage Trump playing into his brand as uh, ultimate rich guy. And I just think, unfortunately for the Democrats, well, they messed this up. But this is good politics. What's your specialty you? today? How are, How are you today? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Hello, everybody. That's Hello. a nice, beautiful looking group of people. So I know this menu better than you do. Okay? I probably know it better than anybody in here. Uh, we're going to take care of the fire department. Okay. We're going to take care of the police department. There you go. Crowd, First responders. Crowd of East Palestine uh, residents crowding around him and that's that's uh that those optics are politics and um he also was like he bought a bunch of trump branded water for residents of east palestine who um uh, he even who, even said there wasn't enough trump branded water to bring so they also brought some lesser quality water. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing you don't have the trump electrolytes in in that dasani but yeah. whatever not distilled, not distilled. Also, spell Evian backwards and tell me what you what you get. <laughs> Evian sucks. Uh, side note. Anyway, um, he, that I, I'm, I just can't believe that the Biden administration chose just to leave this open door for the Republicans and someone like Trump to but go they, in there. They opened the door in December. Like this is the, like I, see, I don't know I, why I'm continuously yeah, surprised. Like, I see Buttigieg talk about like and and I'm glad like two days ago he talks for uh um you know heavier regulation and says things like profit and expediency must never outweigh the safety of the American people. Where was this in December? Like uh, this is all and, and the Republicans can't really even push that either, um, which is the real like problem with the Democrats. They have to instead be like, oh yeah, this is great. Look at me here at the water because it's not like they were actually supporting the uh, rail workers back then either. But like, th yeah, we were telling you. And then not, not like a month and a half later, we get the exact um, example of why we can't be supporting the rail executives here. I think, you know, I think this is a good example of Trump at his most effective when he's not president, but on the campaign trail, acting as a vehicle for general grievances against the, you know, the politicians and politics as normal. Because ultimately, you know, it's not surprising that the Democrats do not show up for these sorts of things, you know, at least not the most visible Democrats, you know, they didn't send Kamala Harris, she's busy, I, I can only imagine, <laughs> I can only imagine at this point. She might still be at the border for last, last I heard, but, right. you know, it's you know it's just the democratic playbook is to pretend as though things are going well even though well, they're not going well and if you are not a republican and you acknowledge that things are not going well they try to shame you for acknowledging that under, under democrats 
that problems continue to happen unabated in ways that are easily predictable, and not only easily predictable, but out of step with Democratic Party platform politics, even if they're not out of step with the, what they end up doing. And so, you know, I think we end up in this pattern where the only person who gives legitimate voice to people like this are people like Trump, are people from the right who can both garner attention at the national like media level, but it are also willing to speak to disaffected voters in a way that will, you know, in some sense, platform them. Like I, you know, if Trump or any other politician, you would just hope that this is what they would all do. Like these are voters who, you know, are in trouble. You want to go down, you want to like support them. But we know that it's mostly about optics. And that's why some people think you shouldn't go down that some people think you should. It's like, this is just a, you know, Trump should definitely not be the only politician down there. He, I mean, and I guess and, DeWine know, was at one point on the scene drinking the water from East Palestine. Classic, which, by, classic Obama. Yeah, that, but that was going to be my my point, uh, mm. Brandon, because um, in terms of pretending everything is fine, is there an image or a moment from Obama's presidency that personifies that more? And Biden's kind of doing a similar thing, just yeah. in the avoidance style. <laughs> I, I remember even coming up on the 2016 election, you could encapsulate the problem with Hillary Clinton's campaign and the difference between her and uh, Donald Trump's campaign and the two slogans, make America great again, and the lesser slogan when they were trying to like rebut that with America's already great. And mm -hmm. that's just not a good message for a country that has as many problems as this one does. And this is going to be one of those things that eventually falls out of news media's attention at the national level, even though it's being like, you know, silenced in a lot of ways. But it's something that will eventually be treated as a problem that was solved because people will stop talking about it as much. And then when, you know, this area or similar uh, areas hit by similar catastrophes of infrastructure, similar climate catastrophes, when voting is not what people think it should be in those areas in 2024. They don't want to. They won't want to acknowledge that the Democrats let these people down, and the Democrats will continue to let down community after community, just like Republicans will uh, across the country until like basically no one votes because everyone realizes it doesn't make a material impact into their life, and that's just really you know. It's sad to see so many micro catastrophes happen to towns and areas across the country that just eventually get forgotten about. And people will just like, oh, like, oh, yeah, that train thing happened there two years ago. Oh, oh yeah, totally forgot about that. D Dalabin writes in Biden's Ukraine visit is way bigger. I I'm sorry, that's not not true at all. And I don't know which voter you're speaking to, which would agree with that kind of it's sentiment. Bigger? That's not it. That's not it's be more specific. It, sure. It's complete. It's Oh, go on. Oh, go ahead. I was no, gonna say that like that. Go, 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 go <laughs> no, you oh, are I, the birthday boy. Have, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't also obviously done both. I mean, yes. this isn't something that like the the train uh, catastrophe didn't just happen while he was over there in in Ukraine. Yeah, I mean that's that's a, you're, the train. That, that's a good uh, point, the, Bender. Sorry. Yeah. No. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say like that. That actually like takes into uh, it naturalizes this sort of like um uh, zero sumness which like american america does have the capacity for it like whether the like like whether you're happy about biden going to ukraine or not that doesn't mean he couldn't also do this there were two weeks before I, that before his trip where he could have done it I where, there, where both parties were trying to basically act like it wasn't as big of a deal i also think you know this is just a, a classic posture not to you know uh Put to find a point on of people who aren't directly affected by things, but who still feel as though they, you know, are considering the larger landscape of the political environment. They want to say, like, oh yes, in the larger scheme of things, you know, going to Ukraine is bigger than a single chemical accident that happened in small town Ohio, but not to those people in Ohio. And if you can't accept that there are always just going to be people in this country who have been directly let down by politicians in a way that directly impact their lives and won't be able to like look past those things when they go time comes time to vote because who would and you know i think people in this country are very able to put their apathy forward as some sort of like marketable objectivity like oh this thing didn't happen to me so i can see <laughs> objectively which one is more important than the other it's like well try explaining that to the people of flint michigan try explaining that to the people affected by gun violence try ex explaining that to you know sandy hook families that oh but there are just bigger things going on than your personal tragedy that's just not how people vote not how people live their lives it's you know it's just not a political op opinion that's going to be marketable like oh didn't you know i had bigger things to do than help you get clean water <laughs> like that's yeah it's politics of scarcity right and it's 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 they they do it in terms of um you know if this funding can go uh can go he is going here then it can't go here i mean i just headlined that story about uh, tr uh biden's just 
ridiculous and inexcusable uh, political move to try to divert the frozen funds from Afghans, uh, Afghanistan Central Bank to the 9-11 victims. It's like, well, we could return the money that is uh, the is uh, rightfully the Afghans and also compensate 9-11 victims. And sometimes Democrats make this false binary uh, a part of their politics outside of financial policy as well. Like the, Biden could have gone to Ukraine and he also could have gone to East Palestine. There's no uh, this is it's a false choice. Doesn't didn't need to happen. Um, and they have stepped in it. I really think that this is going to hurt them uh, long term politically. I, I definitely think this this is super relevant, um, what we're discussing. But I also think it's interesting to point out that I think based on what we're seeing from the internal fighting on the right right now, Republicans, that while this will work or could work, in, mo in multiple ways, um, this was clearly more of a dig at Ron DeSantis than anybody else. Um, that's how this is playing out. That Trump is gonna uh, is doing these things right now, uh, not really because he has Biden on the mind, but because he, he's trying to put himself out there as the. He's still trying to play that whole. He's the man of the people. He's the populist in the Republican Party, yeah. and this further cements that. And uh, it's got to be making the Ron DeSantis uh, crew sort of. Uh, kicking themselves in the ass after uh, seeing how successful that was. Yeah. I don't think Ron DeSantis is going to be a big player in this bad boy. I get, uh, exactly. You know, this, this, this has a lot of ring of Trump 2016. Oh, no, he's going to he put, yeah. put him down before that, though. You know, this has, this has a lot of rings of, like, people had a lot of favorites going into 2016 primaries, too. I remember how well Ted Cruz was going to do, how well Chris Christie was going to do. Oh, look at Carly Fiorina up there. She's going to, like, have the, none of them have any charisma. Yeah, they're all there. And like now with the, those like teen pictures came out with Ron DeSantis and all the other stuff like no, no, I mean, he's doing a crime tour of uh, Illinois, Chicago, uh, Illinois, New York and um, and what with Pennsylvania. So Philly, New York, sh Chicago and uh, Pritzker just very easily uh, bodied DeSantis. And it's just like uh, that. The, the crime tour, the consistent kind of performative culture war stuff, it's not hitting in the same way. He's just. He's exhausting it, and uh, he doesn't have very good sense of, of, of what would work. Like, what Trump did, going to McDonald's, buying burgers for everybody, handing out water, that is nearly perfect politics. And um, I, 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 I think, like, and we just showed this yesterday on the show. Uh, there, of course, take polling with many grains of salt at this point, but Trump had 50% of Republican primary voters uh, and DeSantis was down at 30 in a in a national poll who did that Bradley morning consult. Yeah. So um, it just it, yeah. it's playing out in the numbers, too. I mean, and I think Binder's right that this is I don't think that Republicans really win this issue. I think the frustration I have isn't like like if Biden goes there and drinks water, like I honestly don't give a shit about yeah. that. Like there needs to be a a. a a big uh, policy push or a bully pulpit push to own this issue nationally, because like I said, like like the mine workers in Alabama or and the rail workers here and this like this is just every single time that people who pay attention to this stuff are keyed in to be like, OK, are we going to is Union Joe going to deliver here? He doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so like it's just it's really frustrating like like it's just the missed opportunity as opposed to the the na the long term salience of this for republicans at, at a time where like you know i mean you look at like pink tide leaders like lennon moreno um in like the first wave of the pink tide where like the the sort of populist lefty politics were or or labor politics or pro indigenous whatever it was was popular at that time and so the the politicians would uh, elaborate it to campaign and then have zero actual follow through and that's basically where we are here and like look I'm glad we passed the inflation reduction act or whatever um, like that stuff right now we're on like the we're you have J.D. Vance saying, well, where did that money go? Acting like we shouldn't have done it at all. Mm -hmm. We don't have anyone saying, well, this is the problem when people like uh, cinema um, handicap the actual uh, uh, um, big transformative agenda that you have. And you just are able to like plug holes. You're still going to have massive embarrassing infrastructure failures. And this is this stuff's going nowhere.
the the people the people who who see this sort of stuff and see through it as just like pure playing politics and doing it purely for you know get the the photos and the pictures and the opportunity there and, and promoting yeah. your campaign the people who see through that stuff they're not going to recalibrate who they're going to vote for based on that but the people who shook trump's hands got that trump hat had their McDonald's meal paid for by Trump yesterday, they are without a doubt all going to vote for Donald mm -hmm. Trump when the primaries and the general election come around. And they probably have family in other parts of Ohio. They have family in other parts of the Midwest, probably. And, you know, a lot of the way our country works, these things come down to like a few thousand votes in a handful of counties and a handful of states after like, you know, everyone else votes, to be honest. And so I think it's, it's very, you know, very bold to understand that our politics works a certain way, like entirely optics based. Neither party has any interest in doing anything comprehensive to improve our railway infrastructure in the short term or safety for workers or anything. But, you know, based on the fact that it's an optics game, Democrats just don't even show up when they know that they can't get the optics that they want. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, like they, Trump is, has an easier time promising people the moon or McDonald's in this case, or at least like giving voice to their grievances than, you know, Biden would, because the question would be like, well, why didn't you do anything? Why is not, well, why is nothing happening? And the Democrats answer is a lot of, you know, the excuse that you'll hear across the uh, platform, which is like, well, someone prevented me from doing it. It wasn't as important as this Ukraine thing. And somehow, the, you know, there's like this economy of attention that I can only give so many hours per day and blah, 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 blah. And Pete Buttigieg was on leave or something. It's, you know, there are a lot of excuses that the Democrats would just have to come and give, but I think it would still have been worth showing up in some sort of grandiose like way. You know, it would be even more worth if they went back to their old ways of actually proposing material solutions to these problems, not just grandstanding. Yes. But, you know, that's just not, that's not really on the table. And I also just want to add that Sherrod Brown is up for uh, re-election in 2024. Um, this is a state that's gone increasingly red, and a, it's a general problem, in my opinion, of national democratic strategy, where it is not a 50-state strategy. They abandon and have abandoned for a long time many states in the Deep South, and when they see things as not going their way in terms of politically, uh, uh, the political tide, they retreat as opposed to invest. Um, and perhaps that's part of what we're seeing in Ohio.